The Cost of These Dreams is a book that you have written that is available now everywhere. And as a way of beginning here, if someone out there goes and buys this, what are they getting? You're getting profiles of the most famous athletes who've ever lived, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. And you're getting stories about people you've never heard of. There's enough of a universal theme through all of them about, mm -hmm. about loss and about fathers and sons and about, you know, what it takes to want something and to be great at something and what of yourself you have to trade for it. Hopefully, they'll read a story about Michael Jordan, but also maybe read a story about themselves. By the time I got done with the Jordan profile, I felt like y'all lived together and you're splitting the cable bill and the utilities, you know? <laughs> you, you, the access that you're afforded and then what you're able to get from them is fascinating. What about Jordan that do you, will you always remember about the time that you spent? It was so clear to me as he was watching these NBA games that he's not just watching games like a retired ball player. He's scouting for games that he'll never play in. You know, his playing weight was 218. And when I saw him, he'd been on vacation and gotten up to 250-something and was in the gym knocking the pounds away. A dangerous thing happens in Jordan world is he gets to 240, 235. And now he starts thinking, ooh, I got to get to 218. Mm. And so inside this 50-something-year-old man, is Michael Jordan, who, you know, is dying to get out. This is a common theme, isn't it, in, in the, those that you profile, right? That there's a, that even if you're him, the GOAT, there's still a lack of being satisfied with that that I think the mortals in the world can't identify with. Did you feel that way? Well, I mean, here's, I think, what it is. You hone yourself into this perfect machine to do this one thing, and then it's over. And now you have all of these skills that not, not only, they're worse than useless because <laughs> right. they're the things that are actively conspiring to keep you from like enjoying having been Michael Jordan. Tiger, who is similar to Michael in so many regards, how do you profile someone when the access that you got with Jordan you don't get from the subjects? Well, it's a lot harder and it, as opposed to taking four days, it took two years. <laughs> Tiger is sort of an extreme introvert and you know, there's this Updike quote that somebody told me the other day that the, the mask eats the face. And I think that to a certain degree that Tiger, that was happening to Tiger and it's probably something that if you ask him for his personal struggles other than winning a golf tournament, it is figuring out how to not let the mask of Tiger Woods eat the face of this smart, curious person that he's been since he was a little boy. The difference in his sport is that the time allows him to become another version of himself. And I feel like we're seeing that in a large part as a father who wants his kids to see dad win again. And that gets us to fatherhood, and that's a theme here. When you talk about it now, as a father, your worldview, is it a 180 from what it was? What's well, interesting, I mean, I wrote that story about me as a 20-something and all the things I was missing now that my father had died. I mean, I, you know, you spoke so eloquently about your dad recently, and I just thought that was incredibly honest Thank and moving. You. And only a narcissistic 20-something-year-old would see someone leaving the earth as affecting them. Now that my daughter Wallace, now that she's here, mostly I'm just sad for the stuff that he misses. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a book out today that's doing really well, and he would have, he would have been my first phone call. I mourn not for the fact that I can't make the call anymore. I now mourn for the fact that he can't, he can't get, get it. I get emotional hearing you say it because I and those out there that know that they can't get it, that's what it's about. Not about you anymore, right? Because, yeah. But you, you, can, you can't know that as a 20-something. You, you, you have to get to this place in the world to understand it. Well, like, you know, we were laughing about the Scott Van Pelt logos around here, mm -hmm. and you think it's funny. Do you know how awesome your dad would think all of this is? Without question. And your dad would have enjoyed the, the fact that, that his boy put this book together. As a final thought, what pride in it do you allow yourself in this, it really, in many ways, your life's work? under a cover. Real talk, I, I, one, I'm incredibly proud of it. And I'm also proud of it because you know, I mean, the number of people at ESPN Magazine who've edited these stories, you know, Jay Lovinger and Paul Kicks and Rachel Ulrich, it really feels like something we did together. And I get to go out and Cadillac and take a victory lap, but it really is a lot of, there are a lot of people who are very special in my life who will be special long after all of this circus ends and it feels like something we did. And that's gracious and it's kind and I'm sure it's true. But you're as good a writer as there's on the planet and, and it's, uh, uh, your friendship means a lot to me, you know that. And I, so uh, I'm proud for you uh, and uh, I'm proud for our dads that they'd be able to enjoy what it is we get to do. And so I hope the book, uh, The Cost of These Dreams, which is already doing great, does even better. Go buy it, go buy it. Lots and lots of them, right Thompson? Thank you so much. Appreciate you, my brother. Absolutely.